Hey guys, it's Trisha with Upcycled Stuff. In my last video, I showed you how to turn a few pieces of scrap wood into a canvas. And today I'm going to show you how I decorated my canvas with some thrifted t-shirts and scrap fabric. Here are some of the supplies that you're going to need. And of course, however you decide to decorate your palette um, sign with, you may incorporate some other items. But this is what I use. So of course you're going to need to have your, your palette canvas which I'll leave a link below to show you how I made this one. Some other things that you're also going to need to have already kind of made and um, maybe look back at a tutorial that I've done in the past are some of these flowers. So I have these fun little fabric flowers made out of um, t-shirt. I'm also going to add in some different flowers. This one's not yet put together, so but this is going to be a flower and it's just um, scrap fabric wrapped with wire. So um, you'll need wire. This is just a regular crafting wire. But if you have wire hangers or any other kind of wire laying around that you can upcycle, then by all means. Um, you also need t-shirts or scrap fabric, something else that you can wrap, like I said, this wire with. And then we'll also be making some stems that way. So these are just pieces of fabric. You'll need scissors, something to cut your wire with. Don't use your good fabric scissors. You'll need... Um, glue. I'm using E6000. You can use hot glue, but... And then, of course, paint if you want to paint with a paintbrush. Now, in addition, I'm not a very good freehand um, drawing kind of person or writing letters, so I am using my Big Shot. It's just a die-cutting machine um, to do my letters with, and then these are the letters that I'm using. I use clear contact paper to do my letters with, so um, if you are going to do letters, with the stencil, you'll also need some contact paper. And I think that's all I'm going to use today, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm ready to paint. I've gone ahead and laid down my vinyl letters or my contact paper letters, and I'm going to go ahead and use a dry brush technique. So I have a paper towel, you can use paper towel or newspaper um, handy. I'm going to dip my brush in and then take a lot of the paint off. I don't want it to be um, the paint to be too light, otherwise you won't be able to see my letters. Um, and that's how I'm going to get my letters transferred onto this palette wood because, I, like I said, I'm not a good freehand drawing kind of person. So um, it needs to be heavy, but not too heavy because I really like the look of this wood too. So enough of that. Into the paint we go. And for anyone who's interested, I'm using paint from the Oopsie Daisy table. I never buy new paint. So it's starting to come off dry, so I'm going to just go ahead and start brushing this on. And I'll probably go a little heavier over where the letters are and maybe not so heavy in other places on the board. Again, just so that my letters show up and I still get to see the beautiful palette wood underneath. So as you can see, some of these letters came out pretty good, some of them not so much. Um, it sort of depended on the color of the palette and of, of course how heavy the paint was on top of the letters. And it gets even worse down below. So I am going to go back over these with a paint marker, just a regular paint marker. And I just want to give you a little tip so that you don't tear up the tip of your um, paint marker because this wood's pretty rough on it. When you start your paint marker, you know, you shake it up like you would like spray paint and then you hold it down with the tip depressed until the paint starts to flow. Well, after that, the paint is supposed to free pretty flow, um, flow pretty freely. But I would suggest, again, just to not tear up that tip, to depress it till you get a little bit of paint and then you can just drag lightly along the surface and then the paint, I'm trying to do this so you can see, you can see the paint pool up and the nice thing is is that this yellow paint on here has formed sort of a a little border a barrier for the brown paint to not go flowing all over the place you can almost see it just um, spread all on its own without me even dragging but if you just lightly drag through that paint it'll bring the wet paint down uh, throughout the rest of the letter without you having to really um, Put the tip down on the wood very much. So that's just a tip for keeping, if you need to do this, for keeping your 
um, paint marker from getting all torn up on the palette wood. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these letters here and get my sign completely painted. And then I'm going to go back over this with a little bit of um, sandpaper. Because the overall look of the sign is worn, I don't want these letters to be so perfectly colored. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull out a little bit of sandpaper, over not too much, because then it will defeat the purpose of why I'm even doing this in the first place. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get these painted, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I have a bunch of pieces that I've pre-made and I'm going to go ahead and start arranging them on this board and as we go through I'll show you how each one of the pieces was made. So I do have some stems that I made and these are made with t-shirt fabric just wrapped on wire. And um, I just have a couple of those. These flowers here were made um, I did a tutorial on those recently, and you can I'll put the link down below, but you can find it on my channel. And then this one here is just some um, fabric wrapped wire here, and it's not quite put together yet, but let me um, zoom up so you can see that. So in the center, I'm going to put in a smaller version of those big flowers. And then I have a couple of these little ones here. And I just want to make one more stem here. So the first thing, let's make our stem. You'll need just a, a bit of wire for however long you want your stem to be. So I don't need it to be very long, so use your wire cutters or a good pair of kitchen scissors, not your fabric scissors. You'll ruin them. And then you need your E6000. You can use hot glue if you want to, it just depends on where you plan on placing your, your finished piece. If it's, it's, if it's inside, hot glue will be just fine. And it's a quicker bond, so um, what I'm doing with the E6000 is I'm using these little alligator clips to um, fasten everything. So I'm just going to put a little bit of E6000 on the end of my wire there. And I'll probably put some more on my fabric. And then just to get it started, just fold it over. And it's really hard to get started, so just be patient with it. And you're just going to start wrapping your wire. Once you get a good wrap on, take your little binder clip here and hold everything into place. And then you can start wrapping the rest of your wire with this t-shirt fabric. And every now and again, I would just add a spot of glue. You don't have to do the whole thing. But it's a good idea to keep it in place along the way. Now what I found is when I use the t-shirt fabric it holds itself pretty well in place while I'm wrapping but when I did this other flower the wire form I used just a piece of scrap cotton fabric not a jersey knit and it was really slippery so every so often I put another binder clip down along the way after I added a spot of glue just to keep everything in place until it dried. And as you come to the end, add a little more glue. And you want to try to make sure that you cover up the end of that metal so you don't have an exposed sharp edge. Take another binder clip. And then just hold it shut until it's dry. Okay, so when that's dry, I'll be able to put that on here as another stem. Okay, now let's move on to the flower. So I just took one really long piece of wire 
and I did um, five petals. I found that five was a good number. Six looked a little wonky. So I just started, I actually took three of my fingers and I used it to shape the um, top of the petal around and then just brought it underneath. And then I just went and I did that several times and then started to bend the flower into shape so I could bring these two edges together, right? Okay, and I'm using hot glue here because it's a quick bond and I just want to get this stuff um, to glue together, so all the center pieces to glue together so that I can get it wrapped with a piece of wire. So I'm going to take my, where's my wire? I'm going to take probably, I don't know, maybe six to eight inches or so. And without any kind of rhyme or reason, I'm going to just take it and start winding it. Now be careful, you want to make sure you're winding it through an actual loop here where there's wire, um, where, the, where there's an actual piece of wire. Like if you were to do that through here, you wouldn't really be attached onto anything. So find a place across from that little loop and take these and squeeze these together as much as you can, forming sort of an X in the back. And if you need to take a pair of needle nose pliers to hold these tight, just to get a nice tight hold, go ahead and twist them. And then I'm going to take this tail and put it through another loop here. And come up through another. And twist. This is just to help keep the flower together. If you feel like you need to add some more twists and loops, go for that. I'm going to go ahead and snip this off though because I am going to add some E6000 to it as well. So that'll help it um, keep its shape once it's down on the wood. And then just bend this down so it's somewhat flat. Okay. So there's the petals for that flower, and I have this for the center. So I'm going to take some E6000, I'm going to put it all over the center there, and then drop this on top. And then that way you're doing two things. You're attaching the two pieces, but you're also adding a little bit of extra support to this piece here. And that hot glue is keeping everything in shape while that E6000 glues into place. Well, I'm just finishing up gluing down my pieces. I just have one more little flower offshoot here to put down and I'm using my E6000. And you'll see I have my uh, wire shaped so that it's more um, dimensional, more 3D. So, um, I'm just gluing in places where the wire touches the palette. I'm trying to be careful not to make it too messy because you'll be able to see some of this glue. It'll dry clear, but you'll be able to see blobs of it. And on some of them, I did, uh, I did most of these yesterday, and I had to put them um, under some heavy pressure because the wire was shaped so oddly. So just keep that in mind. You may need to get some heavy books and whatnot, like this isn't really staying on the palette. So I'll probably just take a book and pop it on top of there for a couple of hours. It probably doesn't need a couple hours, but just to be sure. But there's my finished project. All that's left to do is hang it on the wall now.